Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In the previous episode, we created a module that allows the user to configure import settings for assets. We pretty much finished all that's needed for geometry assets, and in this new episode we are going to add support for texture assets. Today we'll work on the backend logic of texture import settings configuration, and we'll create the UI in the following videos. We added this little progress indicator at the end of the previous episode and although it works, we saw that it's off by one and sometimes we see weird values like this. Turns out that we don't have to do much to get the correct values here, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix it. There is two things that we need to do. First, we need to move this line to the end of the function and instead of incrementing it by one, we increase the max value by the number of meshes in each LOD group. Of course, we also have to reset the progress values at the start of this function, since it will generate at least as many meshes. If we have multiple materials per mesh, then it will split them into even more meshes. That's the fix for the issue that caused strange values. Let me quickly use the proper comparison for double precisions here. And since we are setting max value to zero, we should be careful not to divide by max value when it is zero. Now we should get correct values. There was also an off by one issue, which could still occur. And to fix that, we need to have a look at the coalesce meshes function, which we wrote in the last video. Here we check if the current mesh satisfies certain conditions before we try to merge it. However, if it doesn't, that means that we are going to throw away some work that we already did for previous meshes. In addition, we have been changing the max value here, which in that case isn't correct anymore. We can improve this by splitting this for loop in two. In the first loop, we do the check, and if that didn't return from the function, then we can continue and merge the meshes. That's all we have to do in order to fix the progress value. Before we start working on the texture import settings configuration, I'd like to spend a few minutes to do a couple of small bug fixes. In the FBX context constructor, we pass the progression pointer, which I am also going to add in the assertion. This next one is actually kind of important. Sometimes an FBX file contains other information than meshes. For example, it can contain only animation data or other non-mesh objects, which we are not currently using. In that case, we won't get any LOD groups with meshes that we can process and therefore we have to return. In later videos, we are going to add functions that extract animation data and pack them together with any meshes that we have in the scene. Okay, let me go back to debug build and show you the next bug, which I didn't notice was happening, but fortunately was spotted by Matthias, and it happens when we open the select folder dialog. Here we see a path that goes outside of the content folder, and if I click on one of these, it will crash the application. And this happens because we are adding a directory separator to the end of selected folder, which apparently shouldn't have one. In one of my first videos, I remember mentioning that all paths should end with a directory separator. Somewhere along the way though, somehow I failed to stay consistent and now we have got to deal with it every now and then. As you can see, our path stack button generator apparently wants the selected folder to not have a separator character at its end.
We can fix this by having a local variable to do this comparison and leave the selected folder without the separator at its end. At some point I probably have to go and make sure that all paths end with a directory separator application wide, but for now this will have to do. Now when we open the select folder dialog, it correctly shows the path within the content folder. I also forgot to use the right property for the alternating colors in our list box, and we have a wrong margin for this part, so let me fix it real quick. Obviously we should use the alternation index here. And the margin is set here, which I'll change so it's laid out correctly. Now we have the alternating colors back. Let me also change the window title to select folder instead of save. Next I'd like to add a little new feature, which is the ability to open the import settings configuration window without dropping any files onto the content browser. To do this, we can add a new button next to the toggle button for list view. Here I made a new icon that we can use for our new button. Just make sure that it's packed as a resource with the application. First we'll use the global button style for our toggle button, so we don't have to set all these properties here. Instead of setting the template, we can simply change the icon using a style trigger. Then we can remove the template and end up with a much simpler XAML code. Note also that the button is now bigger, which is intentional. Next I put this button in a stack panel so that we can add the second one in a minute for opening the configuration window.
Of course, we want this second button to be only visible when the browser is used for importing assets. So the button is hidden when allow import property is false. We use a data trigger to set its visibility. Finally, we can use the icon that we just added. Let's make the folder icon here a little bit bigger as well. Opening the configuration window is also rather easy, which happens in the button's click event handler. Now the configuration window can be opened using this button, and as you can see, it's also hidden in the select folder dialog. Now I'd like to implement import settings configuration for textures, starting with the texture proxy class. It's similar to what we already made for geometry assets. However, in case of textures, we need to be able to group multiple files together in order to create textures that consist of multiple images. This way we'll be able to create texture arrays, cube maps, and 3D textures. We can add an observable collection of texture proxies that represents the list of images from which we want to create a texture. This list has at least one proxy, which is the same as the texture proxy that owns the list. When copying import settings, we also copy to all proxies in the list of image sources. Note that we skip the first one, since it's the same as the texture proxy. Next, I'll add two methods that add and remove proxies to image sources. The condition for adding a proxy is that there is no other proxy with the same file name already in the list, and that the proxy doesn't have multiple image sources. Removing a proxy can only happen if it's not the same as the owner of the list. The next two methods allow the user to reorder the sources in the list. Both methods move one or more proxies up or down the list. This way we are able to tell the importer in what order the source images should be used to construct a texture array or a 3D texture. To move items up, we first remove the owner proxy if it happens to be in the list. If the list then becomes empty, we simply return. Next, we determine to what index within the list the proxies should be moved. Here we calculate the minimum index, which shouldn't be smaller than 1. Then we move each proxy to that index and increment the toIndex variable where the next proxy should be moved to. MoveDown method is similar, except now we compute the maximum index past the last proxy which shouldn't be larger than the length of the list of image sources. We also don't need to increment toIndex variable. Next is the Texture Import Settings Configurator class. Here we need to add two methods that will take out a proxy from the list and add it to another target proxy. 
This will effectively move a proxy from textual proxies list into the collection of image sources of the target proxy. The move from target method does the reverse. It takes out a proxy from the image sources and puts it back into the list of textual proxies. Before importing the images, we put the names of all source image files for each texture in the list of sources in its import settings. This information is then sent to the C++ importer, which will then try to construct a texture from those files. That's it pretty much for the backend. We can work on the user interface next. Again, similar to what we did for geometry import settings, we create a new user control and call it Configure Texture Import Settings View. I'd like to stop here for today before the video gets too long. In the next video, we are going to mainly copy and paste the XAML code from the Geometry Import Settings Configuration View and reuse it for texture. As always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!